Hey, I'm Garrett. I've been working on these planter products for a little while now. And one of the things that I had to solve was the internal packaging that I was going to use. I needed a way to make sure that the planters themselves didn't move around much during shipping. And there are a lot of different ideas online, uh, a lot of like foam or cardboard inserts or any of that kind of stuff. Most of them ended up being fairly costly. Uh, and would take a while to set up and or there were like massive minimum orders. What I really needed was a, a low volume, low batch way of creating some shipping package, like packaging internals. So this is the idea that I came up with was to use 3D printing as a solution. So this is a 3D printed product, uh, or at least most of it. So it wasn't that far stretched to actually do the 3d printing for the internals so if i uh i'll take a go ahead and take the package out here or the product and the first thing you'll notice here is the the top plate here this is using a build plate uh so we can actually see this right here so this is the build plate that i was using and this one is like a, a polygon kind of material there's a bunch of them out there now that you can do like a, a carbon fiber knockoff kind of look or some neat holographic rainbowy kind of things i wanted to go with a very simple design aesthetic here so it did the polygon look here uh this really helps with as soon as the the and the customer opens the box they at least get a nice visual aesthetic to it instead of just a kind of a cheap 3d print look so this is actually printed this direction on the build plate so this is the bottom so i do one actually two layers on the bottom for this and then no top layer so it prints completely open and that saves a significant amount of filament and then the internal structure there is just using the just the standard slicing tools now, as we go down further, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So with this, it's really just a cube that I've cut some shapes into. Now, this is going up a ways. So if you have a shorter product, you can actually sh uh, shorten your print time quite a bit. But even this here with the, the newer like input shaping tools and stuff like that, this only takes 45 minutes to an hour to print. So being able to do this on demand is very realistic. The, the other benefit to this is that as a, since I'm designing this for it printing internally, I can kind of customize this however I want. So you can see these are nice and secure in there. So I don't have to worry about these moving during shipping. And I can get very precise cutouts that will very securely hold it. Now for these, I'm printing them with no top layer and no bottom layer. Uh, the layering you're seeing here is actually an internal brim. So since I'm printing this with only one perimeter all the way around, there's not a lot for it to stick to the build plate. So I like to do an internal brim. You can do an external one if you want to do the cleanup, but I prefer to do the internal one because then there's no cleanup afterward and I can keep a very precise measurement. And then it also gives the benefit that the internal parts here you can actually make it so that then the, the part won't fall through. So if you were to load up the container like this and then put it inside of the box, you don't have to worry about it falling through or anything. So this is a version that I did for the, uh, the desk buddy version. So you can see another version of it here with this iteration. So this one is an even simpler design, really, where it's just a, a hole cut out and it's mostly just square. So we could eliminate some of this, uh, kind of like rounding some of the corners if we wanted to, but this all creates a very nice solid piece. And you can play around with the internal uh, structure here, which you can get pretty creative with. This is just using the hexagonal infill. And so the planter itself being a hexagon, it kind of left it on theme. But there are all sorts of options now. I think there's probably like 20 of them in Prusa Slicer alone that you can get real creative with these. And so not having to do the top or bottom really saves on that filament and printing time. All right, before we move on to the next 
piece. I would love to have you join the Maker Loop Discord. We've got a little community growing there, and I'd love to see your projects and what you guys are working on. Now, something you're probably thinking is great, more plastic that we're throwing into the environment. Like, how bad is this going to be? Realistically, though, this isn't actually that bad for the environment. For one, you can use recycled PLA, so then you're actually taking existing PLA and at least reutilizing it as something else, and that will help. The weight of this, though, is very light. Even compared to cardboard or foam and fills, this is a, at, at the same weight, if not less, and so just the shipping costs alone are going to be significantly lower. One of the bigger benefits to this, though, is since I'm printing this on demand, I don't have to have 500 of these and then I get through a hundred orders and then there's 400 of them that I end up throwing out eventually That's not great for the environment. So these ones at the very least printing on demand I can save space and I'm not over creating product that doesn't get used Not only that the alternatives that you would think are more environmentally friendly like cardboard Actually end up using a significant amount of water to create them so in environments where it's very arid, especially, that can be a, a big benefit to using 3D printing instead of the cardboard just to save on water usage. Now, technically, PLA is supposed to be biodegradable. There are, there, there's limited truth. There's a lot of marketing in that. So that's not really something that is an environmental benefit, but there are coming out with the new filaments that are a lot more biodegradable that you might be able to, to utilize. Uh, some of them end up bringing up the cost a little bit, but realistically, this piece right here is only about 25, 30 cents of filament. So it really saves down on the cost of the shipping material while still allowing a full customizability and potentially an even tighter uh, packaging experience. On top of that, as soon as I make design iterations to the product, I don't have to worry about the hundreds of different versions of this that I have. I can I keep printing it on demand, so I can make change after change after change, and there will be no impact on the packaging material itself. All right, so that's 3D printed packaging for low volume shipping. If you end up using the idea, I'd love to see what your iterations are, uh, how you're actually utilizing it. Uh, so until next time.